We are back with part two of our week one asynchronous lecture. And I'm working through student generated questions from their weekly readings and we were burning through some from Justice and we will quickly move on to other students. Um, but let me, let me pause um, with one final question. I really did like it. Justice was on fire in week one with the reading discussion questions uh, let's see, number three here, thinking about the Danisi, Marcel Danisi popular culture text, there is now a real, parentheses offline culture, and a hyper real one online. Is one, question is, is one better than the other? Do they exist harmoniously or do they tend to clash more often than not? Okay, so we're talking about real versus hyper real and we're drawing from Jean Baudrillard. Uh, that was not a French accent, nowhere near it. I don't know what it was, but, uh, but, but regardless, <laughs> Baudrillard's concept of the hyperreal continues to gain momentum and usefulness as, as we apply it in scholarly ways. Uh, but it has real world implications because culture is constantly changing. Uh, we, we think of internet culture as hyper real culture, hyper real culture, because it's not real. It's digital culture. Let me broaden it. Let me not, not just internet culture, but digital culture, digital culture, uh, functions as hyper real culture because it is by definition more real than real. Okay. Think about the last time, or, uh, if you've ever experienced an IMAX film, uh, in, in a theater, right and it's 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 blowing your mind your face is uh melting so to speak and uh, you know the sights the sound the look the rumble okay it's doing work that regular humans can't do that few few things in nature can do uh aside from mm, some of the more hazardous materials right <laughs> um tornadoes volcanoes but uh you know so it is a form of spectacle as guy de would say and that spectacle is alluring but the more spectacle we take in the more this hyper real seduces us on an aesthetic level the less interesting the real world seems to be you see what i mean okay it's harder and harder to uh sit still and just Maybe even, not even in real, let's think about another medium, maybe it's hard to just sit still and look at a painting. All right, something people used to do for hours centuries ago when the, when the primary, mo me primary medium of popular culture, right, that primary mode of expression was painting or sculpting. We, uh, so the, so in terms of is one better than the other, popular culture is a subjective experience as is um, real versus hyper real experience. Okay. This is why gamers are so passionate about gaming and online experience and then, uh, other, uh, you know, versus, um, granola hikers, right. Are interested in nature, outdoors, getting away, uh, unplugging. Okay. So gamers versus granola hikers. Uh, it's a subjective experience, but do, you know, are we, do we exist harmoniously or do we tend to clash more? Uh, often than not, it's not a neither or so much as a both and, as Kenneth Burke would say. Now we do. The problem is most people can exist harmoniously, but what we do see is enormous influence and attention given to those that prefer clash. All right, so we are seeing small pockets of cultural clash increase at times and heighten. And that microscopic number of people are, are love to create problems, and uh, and then that, those problems get magnified because we're drawn to, if not drawn to conflict, we're drawn to the the sort of the sensation, sensationalism of conflict in action. If that makes sense. All right, <laughs> let's look at some questions from <laughs> Elizabeth. Uh, as I'm uh, either appealing or in, unappealing to the the peanut gallery here. Elizabeth asks, uh, I'm going to kind of pick and choose here, um, continue, remember, don't forget, continue to ascribe uh, the ideal uh, page numbers to questions so that it allows me quick access uh, or at least accurate access to where we're drawing our inf influence from. What is the easiest way to remember to, how to cite different articles, journals, 
websites and videos. All right, so we do have the APA manual. We've got writing well. The Purdue OWL website is the ultimate crib sheet on how to formalize some correct citational style. But here's a, here's a couple of takeaways. I'm gonna say, if you've got information from somewhere, cite it. If it sounds like something you didn't just generate on your own, your own original thought, then it probably came from somewhere else. So cite it. Um, and um, try, number two, try to paraphrase more often than perform a block quote or block quotation. Okay, what is paraphrase? Paraphrase is to take that citational information, put it in your own words. And finally, um, for, for now, I'm just, just giving some bullet points here. Always list your references, right? List those references at the end of a document. Um, you know, sometimes people uh, uh, title it, and this is APA style is a references page. But sometimes we utilize a bibliography, which suggests here are all the influences that I gained for uh, my presentation here. But I'm not 100% sure which ones got in. Uh, you know, they all contributed, but maybe everything didn't make the final, uh, the final paper or what have you. What kind of popular culture would I have connected with before my generation? Only a question that Elizabeth can answer, right? Um, because my follow-up question would be, what was your generation? And then that would allow us an entry point into exploring those, uh, what, what was hip or hep then? What exactly is popular in today's culture? What's the deal with culture? Uh, popular culture is always shifting and I think that's going to be a takeaway I can spoil in advance but we will um, we will understand as we move through Danisi's text here uh, but something what is popular today you know, sometimes I I'm shaking my head at, at, at youth culture I've, I've officially made that crossover where I'm not getting um, the why I can I can identify what is but sometimes it's the why that eludes me. Um, currently, if you just think about entertainment in general, uh, these uh, Jurassic World movies seem to be, be very popular. People are gravitating to Marvel superhero movies. Okay, um, Disney has mastered the art of the uh, corporate takeover and um, the homogenized global product so they can make something that appeals to all demographics um, in a general sense. Um, but uh, likewise, you know, Netflix uh, has become a ubiquitous term in society. And I can go to the, the most, you know, liberal edges of the country or my own, you know, adult Sunday school classroom and people just name drop it constantly. Young kids talk about Netflix. Uh, college students talk about Netflix. The, um, the adults I encounter, uh, whether faculty or students, uh, it's a ubiquitous term in culture and so that speaks to its presence and its relevance. Um, and a lot of that, well, there are many factors, but and most of those link back to why we study media. Why why studying media is important. Uh, let's see. There are so many things popular in today's culture. I mean, I don't know. Beards, internet trolling that seems to be catching fire. Uh, and, you know, uh, maybe even social activism. Okay? So, different trends will circulate, and we see patterns emerge. And uh, it is important that we study it. And the spaces like these, like courses like this in our major, allows us to do so. What? Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. What? Oh. What, 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 what? What website is the best for true and correct news information and articles that could benefit in future homework sites? Hmm, wouldn't you like to know? Wouldn't we all like to know? And I know we have uh, varying opinions on this, not just in our class, but in the mini classes, okay, um, and that's good. That's healthy that, that we get to have so many shared experiences but also some sort of unique perspectives that we bring in. But hopefully that's a goal we'll collectively tackle together, right? So rather than me feeding something to you, let's earn it. Let's earn it together. The answers are 
out there. We're going to try to steer us, uh, steer you all in that direction. But there's an excellent infographic. This is a, this is a perfect tease uh, for in this course uh, because we have a project coming up later that involves infographics. All right, so there is an infographic out there that breaks down the continuum of uh, of of traditional mainstream journalistic uh, sources or um, organizations and it's excellent and but yet it, it could be contentious for some because that's just we, we've sort of gravitated in that kind of way polarizing um, how we approach information uh, and there's no simple solution to that but but a healthy dialogue is is one of the um, you know, degrees in which we navigate it successfully. So, that's a bit of a tease there. What will I be able to learn in this class and take with me that will help in my future career? Why am I enrolled in this class? Digital media literacy sounds like a joke, but I am here to tell you, uh, a course like this is strategically designed to enhance our critical thinking uh, skills. One of the top skill sets employers uh, report that they wish their employees had more of in addition to common or basic communication skills critical thinking this uh, of course like this is meant to enhance improve our digital literacy first to find it we spend entry weeks defining it in order to thus enhance it improve it because it's not going anywhere okay um, unless you're moving to <clears throat> the outer rims of you know, certain large states, you, you, digital culture is not going away. Um, the, the, a course like digital media, the, 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 com 2143 will broaden our digital content creation skills. Think about that digital media portfolio. What are we doing here? We're, uh, we're not spinning wheels. We're gaining experience across numerous platforms. This is job on job training in action in a classroom setting. All right. So uh, right out of the gate, I, uh, I know for a fact, majority of communication roles and positions that are not uh, tied to teaching like higher education, like academia, a majority of those roles, they immediately want you to have exposure and experience doing that kind of work. Doesn't mean it's your primary duty, but you need to know how to implement and execute social media campaigns. So, of course, like this gives you space to explore that. And finally, and this is not all, just my short list, uh, helps us increase our understanding of how popular culture functions and changes. See also our weekly learning objectives in D2L. I think it's where our official uh, uses come into play, right? That The concrete ones. All right. Let me reset and grab another swig of water because I'm so out of speaking shape. I'm like a monk. I've been in the the castle hiding all summer long. Um, the monastery, excuse me. If I was a monk, I'd be in a monastery. Um, you know, pouring over ancient texts and scrolls with my hood on by candlelight and so on and so on. And yet, uh, uh, I digress. But we are going to jump into even more questions. Your questions are so great. In week one, I, uh, I can't get through them fast enough. We are just rolling through segments here. Uh, and, and we're going to continue the gravy train in uh, three, two, one.